school right now to become a nurse practitioner. Does everybody know what that is? Yeah. All right, good. So I have to do some clinical training out at this doctor's office that is part of an office suite that used to also have a Planned Parenthood clinic. Now, the Planned Parenthood clinic actually closed and moved to a different location like a year ago, but their sign is still out front on the marquee next to the doctor's office sign. So I was there a couple weeks ago, and we get some protesters. Um, <laughs> So they're outside like all day, waving these like gory signs, baby killers, you know, the whole nine yards, and we're in there watching them like, should we tell them? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. But um, that is not my story. The actual crisis of my story um, takes place around the time that my husband and I first moved to Philadelphia. Um, we were very excited to be here. But for some reason, I was having a terrible time finding a job as a nurse. What? I know, like throw something and you hit a hospital around here. I don't know what the problem is, like the economy, whatever. But um, this was going on for like a long time and I was starting to feel really terrible about myself. Um, but then I started to also feel really strange. Like strange in this hormonal kind of way. And it was almost like I was back on the crazy pills. But, um, no, I don't touch those things anymore. Like, birth control pills are really bad news for me. They just make me So, instead, for the past three years, I had been using an IUD for birth control, um, which is great. It's, like, so easy. You don't do anything. And also, having an IUD kind of reminds me of having a piercing. You know, like, <laughs> I used to have this nose ring in my septum for a really long time, which was bad. But um, when I needed to, I could wear a retainer, which is like this little horseshoe thing that you shove up into your nostrils. So, like, I would look totally normal during the day, but I would always know exactly how punk rock I really was <laughs> inside my nose. <laughs> and an IUD is like that. It's like this secret little piece of jewelry. I've been like, right? So, um, so anyway, I've had one for three years. Like, no extra hormones whatsoever. So why was I feeling? So even though it made no sense, I took a pregnancy test, and it was completely freaking positive. So, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, I go down to the Planned Parenthood to try to figure out what the hell is going on. Because an IUD is supposed to be more effective at preventing pregnancy than freaking having your tubes tied. Like, this is not supposed to happen. So I go, and I am examined by a nurse practitioner. And um, <laughs> she's also like kind of impressed by the unusualness of this situation. So um, anyway, we're talking, and basically she determines if somehow like a very early pregnancy has somehow wedged its way into my uterus alongside the IUD, it's not doing very well. So the safest thing to do is gonna be to take out the IUD and with it the pregnancy. And I am crushed because it's starting to sink in that I am going to have an abortion which is something that I never thought was going to happen. So, anyway, she's talking, and I'm just like totally in a daze and shock, nodding. And almost as an afterthought, I say to her, you know, I've also been having this sharp pain in my lower abdomen, like just on one side. And then things got even scarier. And she says to me, you know, in that case, we'll need to rule out an ectopic pregnancy. Oh, I said, because an ectopic pregnancy happens when a fertilized egg implants somewhere other than a woman's uterus. And it's really dangerous because as it grows, it tears apart the fragile tissue wherever it's nested. And it can cause a life-threatening hemorrhage. So I needed to have an ultrasound as soon as possible. But she tells me that it would take 10 days before I could get an appointment for an ultrasound in-house. And if any other patients need one like more urgently than that, they usually just have to send them to a hospital ER. But I have a big problem with this because I have no job, no insurance, I know that an emergency room visit could become insanely expensive. And this might be nothing, right? Like, the pain isn't that bad, so even if it is ectopic, it's probably not a true emergency yet. I don't want to go to an emergency room to deal with this. But 10 days is too long to wait, so I don't want to. So I just go home and go to bed. So. But in the morning, I get up and I'm willing to take some action. So I start calling every clinic in town that could possibly give me a walk-in. And I find a place that offers a sliding scale fee for uninsured people. And the nurse asks if I can make it over within the hour. So 
I head over that way, and it turns out to be an obstetrician's office affiliated with Albert Einstein Medical Center. But unfortunately, when I get there, the doctor is still not able to quite tell what he's looking at using the bedside ultrasound machine. So he has to send me over to the big hospital to use the big machine. And I go, and I'm on the table for a really long time as they image me from some very uncomfortable angles. Um, but then the ultrasound tech finishes up, and she sends everything straight over to the radiologist. Um, and pretty quickly, she's actually able to come back and tell me that it is not ectopic. So, I'm still in a bad situation, but at least I know I'm not about to hammer to death. So, I sit up and I say to the girl, thank you so much. You have been really great. Also, I really need a job. Is there any way you could introduce me to someone who worked in your human resources department? 